Joining us for a conversation today about trends, challenges, and opportunities in supply chain, Matt Yearling, CEO, Pink Solutions. Matt, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Matt, uh, let's talk about uh, challenges uh, first, uh, macro challenges, if you will, the two biggest ones perhaps that you see in supply chain. What would they be and walk us through it? Yeah, so I, I, I don't think it escapes anybody that, you know, the big macro theme is how to deliver on customer expectations, right? The customer is the center of pretty much every company today in terms of delivering on those expectations. And, um, you know, the expectation for everybody in the supply chain is I want my product now or yesterday, right? So that's really what everybody is trying to do and apply digital technologies to be able to deliver on that expectation, number one. Number two, you know, there is a lot of challenges in the labor market in the supply chain today, as we all know. Um, you know, there was one industry number that I heard uh, not that long ago that was about 600,000 people shortage in the industry. So, you know, what people are trying to do is how do, we, how do we make things operationally faster with the resources that I have and more efficient? So those are the two big themes that I see in the industry today. Well, there's no doubt about it that meeting enhanced customer expectation is the big, big challenge. As you say, there are a number of, number of hurdles there. Let's, let's talk about this now at the business level. Let's walk through just how it is that you meet those challenges and overcome them. What would you say? Well, so it's, it's very interesting, right? Because, you know, uh, when you think about the customer expectation, and a Amazon's done a good job at this, right? Meeting expectation within, within, now they're focusing on ours. But the interesting thing is you can't have that velocity in the supply chain without any upstream uh, ac inventory accuracy, okay? So you cannot deliver on expectations unless you know what you've got. And, um, you know, pretty much every company in the whole world that has any inventory that's delivering on a customer expectation has an inventory accuracy problem. So there's some industry statistics that people don't really understand or know too much. Um, so here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a statistic for you. So 90% of all inventory is actually stationary on shelves or in the store. Not in motion, not in transit, not, not coming into your network, going through your network, going out of your network. So it's not actually, making you any money. Not making you any money. So what does that tell you? That means that you're carrying so, too much inventory and you really don't have the, the visibility for that inventory, number one. Number two, inventory accuracy, right? So I, I don't know how many times I go into a warehouse and you know the warehouse operation says, ah, we're at 99.x percent inventory accuracy. Then you start delving into the, the in intricacies of that particular metric, and, and it starts to fall down, right? It's like, well, we got a problem here, we got a problem there. So the reality is they don't really have 99% inventory accuracy. It's a, it's a spectrum between high 80s and mid, mid to upper 90s, but not 99, okay, number one. Number two, where it really does fall down is at the store, okay? So store level of inventory accuracy, it's, it's pretty much around 60%. You know, if you're a large retailer, it's probably around 50%. If you're a very focused retailer, it's probably around 70%. And so when, when all of these companies are trying to f figure out how to fulfill on customer expectation, they're wrestling with ambiguity associated with their supply chain. And so this is the problem that we are focusing on. Before we talk about technology, I just want to drill down just a little bit more about uh, the statistics that you so often do encounter, i.e., uh, in the warehouse setting that, oh, yes, we're at uh, accuracy of 99, you know, point, you know, et cetera. Uh, and the reality, as you say, is not that at all. The question is, uh, is this an issue of blowing smoke or is it that the, the, the managers really don't know? what their accuracy level is. Well, so it's, it depends on what you define as accurate, accuracy number one, right? So it's either financial or, or it's location. You don't know where that, uh, that inventory is, okay? The other thing that this is, this is the big factor is we all talk about the digital supply chain and the digital supply chain is moving bits and bytes, okay? But just because I have that in my system, I don't have that link to the physical world. How do you link that to the physical world? How do you verify it to the physical world? Well, you may have the most elegant transportation management system, yeah, most elegant warehouse management system, but it's care and fed by humans, people like you and me, okay? And how is it care and fed? Pen on paper, fingers on keyboards, hand scanners. And errors occur all the time. So that's, that's really what's going on. It's a, manual, uh, it's a manual process in terms of 
ensuring inventory accuracy, number one. And number two, nobody likes to do that, right? Nobody likes to do the audit. It's the least, um, it's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the least attractive job that there is uh, you know, in, in the operation today. So let's now talk about technology and talk about matching these desired efficiencies uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with reality. How do we increase these numbers? Well, so really fundamentally what we do, okay, we, we basically, I mean, this is, the, this is the way to do it from our perspective. We basically use the same type of technology that you use in autonomous vehicles, okay? So if I'm, if I'm in an autonomous vehicle, I see people walking down the street, I see cars, I see all of these things. Um, and, and the computer understands that. So what we do is, is pretty much use the same technology. We take a manual repetitive task that, that people cannot execute flawlessly. There's always, it's an error prone activity and we, we, we give that to a robot, okay? And so you give that to a robot, and you say, go and execute this, and, and, go and, and go and scan my inventory. Now, going back to what I was saying earlier, right? So most of the inventory is stationary on shelves. So it's easy to track a package when it's actually going down a conveyor belt or going in the back of the vehicle. But how do you track uh, inventory that's on shelves? And so pretty much, if I'm looking at inventory on the shelves as a human, and I can understand, What's in front of me? You can train a robot to do the same thing. That's what we're talking about. Let's talk specifically about the companies that are investing in these types of uh, technologies or any other technologies that perhaps uh, uh, you feel were relevant to uh, discuss. Well, that's a very good question because it's not specific to one industry vertical. I mean, pretty much anybody that is, has inventory has this problem. So in the, in the United States, there are 250,000 plants and warehouses, and they all look pretty much the same, right? They all have racks with inventory on it, or they have, for fast-moving product, inventory on the floor. Now, if you look at uh, automated storage and retrieval systems, they're single-digit penetrated in the United States today. So if, if I look at some of the technology that's out there and say, do I need to make this transition to an ASRS system, replace my warehouse workers with a, a, a workforce of maintenance repair, mechatronics people, to maintain my ASRS system, or do I adopt a technology that can overlay on my existing infrastructure with minimal capital outlay? So these are the, these are the type of opportunities. So pretty much anybody, so whether or not you're in, um, so some of, the, some of the people that we are engaged with, people like large retailers, large uh, package deliverers, uh, large uh, consulting organizations, uh, large inf in, uh, internet infrastructure providers, uh, healthcare, automotive, I mean, pretty much any industry vertical that has any inventory stored, stored in warehouses is, is a potential tar uh, customer. Matt, final question. I don't want you to get away without asking you this uh, briefly. What do you see lying ahead for the supply chain industry? Well, so what we, what we see, um, you know, for example, what we do is, is this aerial robot, a drone, right, to look at this inventory. And uh, it's a very... It's a very interesting way to do that for hard to reach locations, okay? And you're taking a human out of the way, which is, and, and you're really helping a, a human do this uh, a, a lot more effectively. What people think and what people misconstrue in the short term is that this is gonna re replace people's jobs, okay? So, whereas what we do see is that these are cobots. These are working hand in hand with, with people to do their job in fact, do, do the job that they can't necessarily achieve today, much more effectively and efficiently than how they're, how they're doing it, and much more frequently. I mean, really, using a robot is hundreds of times faster than having a human going around and doing this. So what we see in the short term is that these are going to work hand in hand with people, right? And people are overestimating the impact of robotics on the labor market in the next uh, three to five years. Beyond that, I think we understand, right, the power of AI and the power of robots. There is no reason for a human to be doing a manual repetitive job. That's, the, that's what a robot is perfect for, and that's what I think is going to happen in the future. Great, great overview and drill down in our brief time here today. Matt, I know you're busy here at the uh, conference, but you found time to speak with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's Matt Yearling, Pink Solutions, speaking with us today about the technology that you need to improve your supply chain. Thank you for watching.